Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. Come on in here. Let's talk about it. Come on. Come on, bluff and you want to be my friend. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to My View on the View, a commentary podcast all about ABC's The View. But I do something a little bit different when it comes to talking about ABC's The View. I use the show like a teaching tool to teach and talk about life. And so we don't focus on the politics of the women. We focus here on the table dynamics, the relational dynamics, and we glean from it things that we can use in our everyday lives to become better. You know, a lot of people are saying online that Whoopi's rant this morning uh, was nonsensical. I saw that a lot. Um, Also, a lot of people are questioning and they're saying, what is wrong with Whoopi? When they start talking about abortion, she seems to always have this visceral, very uh, angry, almost, um, almost out of control, emotional, emotional reaction. Well, I think I have the answer to that. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. But because this, this podcast isn't really about the view, it's about me and you, we're going to end on what is the greater message here? What is it that you and I can take from this situation and use in our own lives? Okay. So I first want to give you some stats. So according to the WHO, the World Health Organization website, quote, around 73 million induced abortions take place worldwide each year. Guys, when I tell you I was shocked, I'm not using that word for dramatic effect. I I actually was. I could not believe that. 73 million? Wow. 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 Also, according to the CDC, because you know how it is, once you start digging on the internet, you just go deeper in the hole. The CDC on their website, they said that in 2019, women in their 20s accounted for more than half of abortions. And that uh, that exact stat was 56.9%. Uh, this is not unusual. What happened on the show this morning, every single time they have someone on the show who doesn't agree with her viewpoints on abortion. She acts this way. She behaves this way. She has this emotional, she gets triggered by the fact that they don't agree. But what is it really about? What I think this is, and what I've always thought this is, is Whoopi, for those of you who don't know, revealed many, many years ago that she had, before the age of 25, Seven, yes, you heard me right, seven abortions. I think based on the fact that she's never progressed when they talk about this, she behaves the exact same way every single time someone disagrees about it. So that shows no progress, right? We know there's going to be progress when, let's just say, the first year somebody disagrees with us, we may have an emotional explosion, okay? Well, then the next year someone disagrees with us, we may have a teeny weeny little bit emotional explosion, okay? There's a little bit of growth there. The next year somebody disagrees with us and we don't have any emotional explosion, we can say, hey, I see it this way and you you see it that way and hey, that's the beauty of the view. See, that shows progress. We're not talking about perfection, but growth and progress. I feel That her, the root of this emotional explosion is because she still has unresolved guilt and unresolved shame connected to her decisions to have seven abortions. And that's just before age 25. She may have had more than that. And it's highly possible that she did. Now, for those of you who don't know where this information came from, there was a book that was written, I think it was in the, it was either in the late 80s or early 90s. You probably can still find it online. I don't even know if the author is still living. She may still be. Her name is Angela. Her last name starts with a B. I can't pronounce it, but wrote a book many years ago called The Choices We Make, 25 Women and Me, she was talking about herself, speak out about abortion. And in this book, Whoopi Goldberg was one of the 25 that spoke to her and shared her story. And Whoopi said uh, in this book that her first abortion was at the age of 14. And she found out she was pregnant and she was very fearful. Of course, you can imagine any 14 year old would be. And um, her friends told her all this stuff to do about how to get rid of the baby. She describes in this book that she was told to sit in very, very hot water. That would 
you know, take care of things. She was told to swallow bleach and she did. She was told to swallow some type of cream and she did and baking soda and all these things. And of course, none of that, you know, did what she was wanting to do. She didn't get the outcome she wanted. So according to Whoopi, she took a clothes hanger, that old school, old fashioned metal hanger. And she took herself to a public park. And we don't know if she had assistance there or if she took care of it on her own. But that is what she describes as her first experience with pregnancy and her first experience with abortion. As I said, I feel that that is what this is about for her. You know, I um, understand that a lot of us hide our, re- our issues behind real legitimate issues. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. I've done this when I didn't know any better. I'm sure you've done it once I start giving some other examples of an abortion. You know, um, we've all done this, male or female. We've all hid what was really the issue with us behind some some real issue. For instance, you know, a lot of people are saying online, well, no, Whoopi, because she said there in her, um, I'm not going to necessarily call it a rant, although it was, um, but in her speech, <laughs> she talked about it's my body and you heard People clapping. See, it's my right to choose. Okay, well, see, that's a real issue that a woman's body is her own and it's her right to choose. And so people say that's why she gets so angry every time, you know, they get on this subject. It's because she really is supportive of women. I am not saying that Whoopi Goldberg is not a supportive of women. Obviously, she is. I am not even saying that the other reason that people are saying, well, the root of, you know, she's just like, she gets so fired up. One person, she gets so fired up, you know, because she just really, you know, Whoopi used to be out there marching for a woman's right to choose. Okay, well, and she can't march anymore. So she just gets so fired up. Okay, I don't doubt any of that. Right. But I will tell you personally, I highly doubt that that's what this strong reaction is about. You see, any time. Any person, whether it's Whoopi Goldberg or me or you, anytime there is an issue being discussed and we have, we get triggered by it, by the discussion, especially if the person has a different opinion about it than we do, it's because we have a personal connection to whatever that issue is. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I just had this happen to me a few days back. I was talking on the phone with someone and um, we had had years ago, a discussion about child molestation. And my stance is always believe the child. Always, I'm going to believe a child. Now, after the, you know, the evidence or whatever is done and it comes out, well, child wasn't honest. Okay. Then at that point, I won't believe the child. But for me, I'm going to always believe a child first. I want that child to know, I believe you. And there is no question about it. I believe you. But this person in years past had had this position of, no, you, you don't believe children until all the evidence. And I remember that bothering me. And that person gave me an example of something they said had happened to somebody else. And I remember thinking even then, mm, something don't sound right with that. I interviewed people for eight years. You know, and when you interview people for years, you learn the subtle signs of how people masquerade. Okay. So a few days back, we were having another conversation and I can't remember how we got on it now, but we were we got to talking about this again. And I was saying, because I'm never going to change from that. I believe in believing the child. And this person went on this highly emotional rant about how you should not do that. Well, then I said, wait a minute. So I said, this is bothering me. Why are you taking up for child molesters? That's what it sounds like you're doing. And this person went on to say, that's not what they were doing, blah, blah, blah. Well, turns out, turns out this person, in my opinion, based on what they told me, which I'm not going to say here, at one point in their life had been accused of something in that area, molesting a child, touching a child sexually, basically touching a child in an inappropriate way. So see, that's why they had such a strong reaction that you never believe kids first. You do this and this and this. And with the way that person lies, I don't doubt that they actually did that (laughs) because I'm like this. If you will lie about who you are as a person, you won't, you'll lie about whether you actually touched a child or not. I mean, who's going to even say they didn't do it. They did it rather. So do you understand my point? And I want, I share 
this similar to Whoopi because I want you to understand when we become highly emotional about an issue, it's not necessarily because, well, I'm just such an advocate for women. It could be that. But it also is, not could be, but is because we have a connection to the issue ourselves in some way, shape or form. And that connection goes very deep. It's not just because I'm a woman and I want to support women, you see, in the case of abortion. And so I, you know, I didn't type all of this out online. I just was snooping and tiptoeing, seeing what people were saying and how they were responding. But I thought, you know, you know, um, the bottom line is I I think, um, the way Whoopi handled this this morning in particular was very off-putting because if you saw the show this morning and you could hear some of it in uh, what she said there, she okay, what happened before that, which I didn't play, is that the they were talking about, of course, as most of you know, because it's making the news all over the world, um, is that Politico, uh, for those of you international listeners, excuse me, international listeners, Politico, I believe is a U.S. based organ- news organization is online and they released, you know, how they got it. God only knows, but someone leaked to them a, a brief where, you know, if this becomes, you know, if this brief was accurate, then the U.S. Supreme Court is going to overturn Roe v. Wade, which made abortion, uh, you know, legal here in the U.S. in terms of federally legal. OK, and so I will tell you, um, <laughs> You know, Lindsey Granger had a very, not very different, but she had a different perspective on abortion than Whoopi did. Actually, then all of them did. And no, nobody else attacked her. But I'm going to tell you something. If you saw the show this morning, you know, Whoopi was looking right at Lindsey when she was talking. She was pointing at her. I, I submit to you, it wasn't, it was not um, Lindsey that she was looking at. Because then she went on this, as you heard at the end of, of her speech there, It doesn't have anything to religion or religion. See, Whoopi was raised Catholic. Now, she's not a Catholic anymore. Whoopi describes herself as a non-religious person. Okay, even though, you know, you know, we won't get into her stage last name of Goldberg, but she has said that she, you know, is just a non-religious person. You know, she also not only was raised Catholic, she went to a Catholic school. And so I feel like, again, her strong reaction to any time anything even religious is brought up. And you see her react that way. It's because she always felt like religious people looked down on her because, you know, of her choices. Well, probably they did, which is wrong. You know, we should try to be as understanding um, to people as possible, but we should all have boundaries. Like what I was just telling you a moment ago. Oh, once, you know, that conversation was had. Uh, and me realizing, oh my God, this person so much as admitted <laughs> that, you know, they have been accused. I don't need to have any more contact with that person. And I made that very clear. Personally, I will not be associated with anybody who has ever harmed a child. <laughs> And yes, for me, that includes even being just accused of it because you would have had to be in a certain circumstance to even be accused of it by a child. See, I know because I work with abused children. So for me, and plus I think that person did it because just like I said, the history of lying that I just knew about, right? So I think the way Whoopi handled Lindsay this morning, she took it out on Lindsay personally as if Lindsay was saying to her, Whoopi, you ha- you shouldn't do this with your body and you shouldn't do that. And did you guys see the way Lindsay just sat there just astounded? And I just thought, I hope, I hope during the commercial break or after the show, Whoopi went up to her and apologized and said, you know what, girl, I'm so sorry. I was looking right at you and I was pointing at you, but girl, I was in a whole nother world and it had nothing to do with you. And I'm so sorry. I hope something like that happened because we've talked about this before. When Whoopi, um, Whoopi can, when Whoopi has her thing, like what happened this morning, it's just hard for you to come back from that unless you are brave enough to stand up to Whoopi. And I will tell you guys, I feel like one of the main reasons why, and I've always felt this way. Remember when Sunny first came to the show, she was staunchly um, against abortion and she made it clear it was because of her Catholic faith. And, and when Whoopi would have that, those reactions with Sunny, 
She would just jump down her throat. She would almost verbally cut her head off. All of a sudden, we saw Sunny kind of change her tune and start saying, you know, she would say, like she said this morning, for those of you who saw the show, I still, you know, I'm as a Catholic, da, 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 but I do believe in a woman's right to choose. I believe Sunny started adding that in there to, so, because she didn't want to deal with Whoopi's wrath about the issue. Because you remember when she first came, Whoopi used to really jump down Sunny's throat a lot. And so as I end our time together, I will just say this as we are now transitioning to the broader issue here. I understand personally that Whoopi may have some unresolved shame and guilt about her choices. But that's the thing. They were her choices. And she doesn't have a right to take out her frustration, her guilt, her shame, whatever, and kind of project that onto other people. Even just, you know, again, people in the audience were clapping because she hid her junk, her guilt, her shame, in my view, on the view behind, it's a woman's right. And, you know, because everybody's going to clap about that, right? Who's not going to clap on a woman's right to choose? Even men are clapping on that because it sounds so good and it's true. But that ain't the reason why she was so pissed off and angry. But unless you know her history about her sharing to the world and with the world, rather, which she didn't have to do, it was very brave of her to do about her choices in this area, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that it probably has something to do with that. Now, as I end, I want to just share with everybody this. You know, um, I want all of us to just be more aware when we're in conversations with people. Um, this conversation with you and I today is an example. When people say things that we don't agree with, Yes, I will be the first person to say it is very hard to not interrupt them, to not be like, wait a minute, blah, blah, blah. Honey, child, don't I know? Because that's something I'm still working on. All of us um, are challenged by people who have different viewpoints than us. But that is the essence of healthy relationships, whether they are healthy dating relationships for all my single folk, um, marriages, uh, healthy working relationships. Nobody wants to have friends that are an echo chamber. Nobody wants to work in an echo chamber. No one wants to live in a home that's an echo chamber. Because all of us intrinsically know, wait a minute, girl, you don't agree with me all the time. Are we really friends? Or, hey, you don't, come on, everything I say can't be right. <laughs> right, right. You, you got to have a different opinion sometime. So I want to just encourage you to do what I'm doing. Continue, and even though it's hard, continue to work on being more open to hearing people who have a different viewpoint and let's not cut their heads off. Let's not emotionally explode on them to the point where they're just scared to move. Let's not do that. Let's just work on it and just say, Hey, (laughs) Hey, if I need to maybe remove yourself from the situation, get off the phone with them in the date. (laughs) Hey, I'm going to bed now, you know, (laughs) whatever, just do whatever we need to do until we can get to a point where we can sit there and say, all right, I can listen. That doesn't mean I'm going to change my mind or you're going to change my mind or I'm going to change yours, but I can at least hear you, (laughs) which shows perfection. No, it shows growth. And that is what we should all be after in our lives, not living perfect lives because that don't exist, but living lives of progression and growth. So this is my view on the view, uh, a podcast all about ABC's view. And this is what I think is the root of what people are talking about in regards to why Whoopi has such a strong reaction to any time someone disagrees with her about abortion. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you later. In a place to hide, in a